Hello, welcome to module four of this series of videos in uh, introduction to business statistics. So as I was brainstorming, what do I wanna say in this introductory video? How do I wanna present this topic uh, that we're looking at here? This one is now you know, intro to, to probability. Uh, I started to find myself sounding a lot like I think any academic or specialist in pretty well any field. You know, if you talk to uh, somebody who's, who studies biology, they'll tell you, you know, I really think that everybody should have some basic understanding of biology. Or a psychologist will say the same thing about psychology. Or I'm an economist. I think, man, everything would, the world would be a better place if everybody understood some basic economic theory. Well, as I'm trying to put together what do I want to say in this introduction to probability video, I'm starting to think the same thing about probability. Everybody should have a basic understanding of probability and probability theory. It has applications in every aspect of life. You know, whether we're looking at complex risk management strategies, uh, or we're looking at project management, uh, or you know, you're a gambler and you're going to the casino and you're playing cards. Uh, you know, it just it seems to show up everywhere. So uh, hopefully in this module, we'll, we'll cover some of the basics that um, not only will they hopefully facilitate further study and you know, understanding probabilities as we go through the course, but I hope that it will you know, maybe demonstrate just how widely applicable um, understanding probabilities can be. So bef I can continue to babble on about this. Let, let's just get into just what is it we're going to do. Okay, so what does it mean probability? Probability is really talking about you know, the, the likelihood of something happening. So a likelihood of an event. Now, you know, you've probably been exposed to probability at some point or some context or what have you. So maybe you know, we have some basic understanding of, of probabilities and how they work. You know, they generally range from a value of zero to a value of one. 0.5, of course, is in the middle. So a probability of 0.5, if, if an event has a probability of 0 0.5, it me basically means that it's equally likely and unlikely to occur. So the, the chances of something happening and not happening uh, are the same. As, as we approach zero, this is going to be something that is less likely to occur. Or as we approach one, this is more likely to occur. So, for example, we can take something as mundane uh, as, uh, let's say, flipping a coin. This is, you know, everybody who teaches statistics and probability. Flipping the coin is the first thing that you go to. So flipping the coin, you can either be heads or you can be tails. Now, assuming that the coin is what we call a fair coin, it's got uh, both of these sides and it's, you know, properly weighted and constructed and everything. Well, we say there's a 50-50 chance of getting heads or tails. What that means is that there's, you know, we're sitting at 0.5. We're, we're right here. There's an equal chance of getting a heads uh, as there is not getting a heads, which means, of course, in this case, uh, flipping a tails. So we're exactly the same uh, regardless. Now we can go a little bit further and we can flip, a, sorry, we can roll a dice. So if we roll a dice, we have six outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six. What's the probability of any one of these coming up? So what's the probability of uh, rolling a three? Well, the only way I can roll a three, there's only one die, so the only way I can roll a three is if it's, in fact, a three. I can't, there's no combinations here, it's just one dice. So there's one out of those six possible outcomes, so there's a one in six chance of rolling a, rolling a three, just like there's a one in six chance of rolling a four. So what this means, this is the probability of an event occurring. What we'll then talk about also is the complement of that event occurring. And the complement would just be, in this case, one minus the probability of that event occurring. And so this would be five, six. So here we're looking at the number, the probability of an event occurring is you know, somewhere down here, one sixth. And so the probability of that event occurring, rolling a three, not very likely. 
its complement means the probability of not rolling a 3 much more likely. Now we're over here at 5, 6. So, okay, so rolling a dice and flipping coins, not really all that stimulating. But as we progress through the material, you know, it will become... I hope it will become much more more interesting because this is the groundwork for talking about different probability distributions uh, that, that relate to or that correspond with different types of events, you know, whether we're looking at discrete or whether we're looking at continuous variables. These terms, remember, are the terms that we talked about in Module 1. So, in Module 4, what we're going to be looking at are really defining probabilities. Really counting uh, is even an important part of this chapter. Now you might think if we look at these two uh, little experiments that I did here, there's two possible outcomes here, there's six possible outcomes here. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. You know, we can take that a step further and you know, let's say you're opening up a, a pizzeria and you want to sell pizza. Um, and you have five ingredients for your pizza. Okay, so how many different two-topping pizzas can you make? How many different three-topping pizzas can you make? How many different four-topping pizzas are you making? Okay, so it's a simple example of the, the counting rules. And we'll talk about these things called combinations and permutations, different way of counting, different combinations of things occurring. And we need that in order to calculate probabilities. We'll also look at some of the basic arithmetic uh, of, of probabilities. So we'll look at the addition law. Uh, because adding probabilities, it's dependent on whether or not what we're adding together, are they mutually exclusive or not? To say something is mutually exclusive, uh, or to say that these two probabilities that we want to add together, to say that they're mutually exclusive, means that if one event occurs, uh, the other event cannot occur. So, you know, if I'm calculating the probability of, or adding up probabilities of cars crossing over a bridge, and trucks crossing over a bridge. If a car crosses the bridge, uh, it can't also be a truck, right? So it can't be both a car and a truck at the same time. So those two things are mutually exclusive. And so whether or not they're exclusive, that that will affect the, the arithmetic in adding probabilities together. Similarly, we'll look at the multiplication law. And it's it's similar, you know, we, we understand multiplying things together, but in, in dealing with probabilities, it, the way that we do this depends on whether or not events are independent or not. So does one event occurring have any impact on the probability of something else occurring? So for example, rolling that die. Every time I roll the die, uh, each probability is independent of what was rolled prior to that. If I roll a 4, okay, if I roll the dice again, the fact that I rolled a 4 just before, it, it has no impact on the probability of getting a 4 again or getting a 6 or what have you. Those events rolling a die, totally independent. Drawing cards out of a deck, a deck of cards on the other hand, well that's not independent. Because if I have a deck of cards, and it's 52 cards in the deck, I can calculate you know, what's the probability uh, that I draw an ace out of that deck of cards. Well, I know that there are four aces in that deck of cards, so the probability of drawing an ace, that's going to be 4 out of 52. That will, that will give me the probability of drawing an ace. So I draw a card, what if that card's not an ace? So I draw 3 or 10 or anything else, so I don't get an ace, so no ace. Well, how does that change the probability of getting an ace if I draw another card? Well now if I've taken one card out of that deck, now there's only 51 cards left in that deck, and maybe there's still 4 aces because I haven't drawn one yet. So the probability now of getting an ace is going to be 4 
out of 51. So this is just maybe to, to wet your palate, <laughs> to get you interested, hopefully, in, in appreciating some of the subtleties and maybe some of the complexities uh, in dealing with, with probabilities. So this is what we'll go through uh, in this exercise. Not so much getting into uh, some more interesting type of problems. We'll hold off on that until we get into some of the specific probability distributions that are required to address problems like this. This is just going to be covering some of the basic fundamental arithmetic. So we'll be looking primarily in this module at how do we deal with probabilities under these uh, different scenarios. Okay, so hopefully this uh, will be of interest to you. Again, this is a starting point. It's absolutely important that we understand the nature of probabilities uh, before we can go through into some of the more complex uh, problems that uh, that we will see. So we'll get through module four. Uh, hopefully it's interesting. I don't mean to sound like it's going to be dry or boring, uh, but it's an important aspect of, of understanding uh, statistics. Okay, so let's get into our first problems. Thanks for watching.